praise the Lord everyone. I give honour to the Spirit of God, to our Overseer Landell, Evangelist Landell, Minister Rob, Saints, Friends. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School again today. We'll begin by breathing a short word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come once more in the precious name of Jesus. Father, we honour you today. We magnify your name. And Father, we just give you all the glory because you are so worthy. Father, we thank you for sparing our life. We thank you, Lord, that we can come together in Sunday school, that we can hear the dropping of your word. Father, as we come together, we pray that you will prepare every heart. We pray, Lord, that the word will dwell in our hearts and that it will bring forth much fruit. Father, we don't want to just be hearers of the word, but we want to put into practice everything that we hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. So today, we are focusing on the first lesson of the spring quarter. The topic is Alpha and Omega. Our focus thought is the revelation of Jesus Christ should produce awe and wonder in us. Our lesson text is taken from Revelations 1 verses 8 to 18. Our focus verse is taken from Revelations 1 verses 17 to 18. And I'm just going to read it. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Praise the Lord. The book of Revelations is called the Revelation of of the apocalypse, meaning the sudden uncovering of something that was previously hidden. The book records a vision of the Apostle John which occurred while he was a prisoner of the Roman Emperor Domitian. He had been sent to the Isle of Patmos, a small rocky volcanic island located in the Aegean Sea, off the coast of modern-day Turkey. In Revelations 1, 9, John states that he was in the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelations was written by the Apostle John in A.D. 90 to 96. As we know, it is the last of the New Testament books and it is the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave to him. It was delivered to John by an angel. It was written to show us things which must shortly come to pass. Revelations 1 verse 1. This should be understood as things which will shortly come to pass in God's timing and not man's timing. Praise the Lord. And you know what? There is a special blessing to those who read, hear and keep the words of this prophecy. Revelations 1 verse 3. And it is such a pity that it is often avoided in modern day churches. 
Some find the strange imagery confusing. The warnings and the predictions of the earthly and cosmic judgments are too negative for some people. And others mistakenly teach that the predictions have already been fulfilled. And we know that that is not the case. Praise the Lord. We should read the book of Revelations, not only to understand God's future plan for the world and his people, but also to learn to apply the spiritual principles that are emphasised in it. Praise the Lord. So, the aims of our lesson then. Firstly, to understand the significance of the term Alpha and Omega. Secondly, to understand John's use of the term circumlocution. And thirdly, we want to explore John's vision of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, we're just going to focus on the topic of the lesson, Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. This description of God being the first and the last, the beginning and the end, is also found in Isaiah's writing. Isaiah 41 verse 4 says, I, the Lord, the first and with the last, I am he. Isaiah 44 verse 6 said, Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 48 verse 12 says, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel. My called, I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. Now, it's interesting that while Isaiah used these titles for Jehovah, Jesus used these titles to describe himself. He proclaimed himself to be the Alpha and Omega. Let's see. In Revelations 1, 8, Jesus said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. In Revelations 1, verse 11, Jesus also states, I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last. Jehovah God in the Old Testament is Jesus Christ in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Praise the Lord. The Apostle John backs up this statement in John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.14. He declares that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the Word was God. He goes on to say in John 1 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the Alpha and Omega the first and the last, 
the beginning and the end. Only God incarnate could make such a statement. Only Jesus Christ is God incarnate. Praise the Lord. The revelation of who Jesus is should produce awe and wonder in us. When the woman at Sychar's well came to the revelation who Jesus is, she left her water pot and cried out, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is this not the Christ? John 4, 29. Doubting Thomas cried out, My Lord and my God. John 20, 28. Revelations 4 begins. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. The seven churches addressed in John's revelation of Jesus were real churches in Asia Minor. These churches were undergoing persecution and difficulty, especially during the reign of Nero in AD 37 to 68 and Domination in AD 81 to 96. In Revelations 1 11, Jesus told John to write what he saw in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia and Laodicea. The churches had diverse congregations. They may have been selected because they represented the totality of the churches of that day. The word seven stands for completion. What was said to the seven churches is relevant to the church today. The seven churches represent all the churches of all ages. Praise the Lord. Immediately after greeting the churches in Revelations 1-4, John said that the greeting came from Jesus Christ. He then used a literary device called circumlocution. If we don't understand it, it is easy to misinterpret what was said. So what exactly is circumlocution and how is it used? Circumlocution is a device where the writer uses many words to be vague on purpose, when a few words would be more specific and efficient. So, in other words, he's using a lot of words where he could say the same thing, just using a few words. Praise the Lord. So, let's look at what John said. He said, Grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. And that's Revelations 1, 4-5. This use of circumlocution is common in Hebrew writing. At first glance, it seems like John is referring to several people. But when we look more closely, we can see that each statement is referring to Jesus alone. John was using circumlocution to reference Jesus as God. Praise the Lord. In Revelations 1, 8, it says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was 
and which is to come, the Almighty. This is also an example of circumlocution. John now moves on to explain the vision that he was given by God. He explains in Revelation 1 verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. The phrase in the Spirit on the Lord's day is most likely referring to a Sunday. The Lord's day in this verse is acting as a time marker to let us know when the vision occurred. Prior to that phrase, John gave his location at the time of the vision as being the Isle of Patmos. Praise the Lord. Revelations 1, 12 to 13. John continued, And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. The seven candlesticks are the seven churches in Asia. Jesus confirmed this to John in Revelation 1 verse 20. Jesus was standing in the midst of the churches. No matter what the churches face, Jesus protects them with his love and his power. Through his spirit, Jesus is still among the churches today and he is in complete control. No matter what's going on out in the world, we don't have to fear because we know that Jesus Christ has got our back. Praise the Lord. The one like unto the Son of Man found in Revelations 13 and Revelations 14 verse 14 is also a reference to Jesus. We're now going to compare Daniel's description of the Ancient of Days in Daniel 7, 9 to 14, with John's description of the Son of Man in Revelations 1, 12 to 15. The results may or may not surprise you. Daniel's vision reported the Son of Man coming in the clouds to the Ancient of Days before being given the everlasting dominion over the kingdom. And you'll find that account in Daniel 7 verses 9 to 14. John's vision identifies the Son of Man, Jesus, with the same description Daniel gave for the Ancient of Days. Let's just read Revelations 1. 12 to 15. John said, The Son of Man was clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Praise the Lord. The same description markers of snow, wool, and fire were used to describe Daniel's Ancient of Days and John's Son of Man. By describing the Son of Man in this way, John is saying that the Son of Man 
and the Ancient of Days, God, are the same. Praise the Lord. Let's look at John's response to seeing Jesus. John said, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Revelations 1, 17. By saying he fell at the feet of the Son of Man, who was just described as being the same as Daniel's Ancient of Days, John was once again emphasising that his vision was a vision of God. Praise the Lord. God's glory can affect people to such an extent that they can't stand on their feet. In 1 Kings 8, 10 to 11, it says, It came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. In Ezekiel 1, 28, Ezekiel spoke of the glory of the Lord. He said, And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Daniel 8 verse 17 says, So he came near where I stood, and this is Daniel speaking, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. Praise the Lord. So we shouldn't be surprised that John fell as if he was dead. Praise the Lord. Many people are confused by John's vision in Revelations 1, 10 to 18, because it seems like many different things are happening at once and it is difficult to sift through the imagery. However, John was not describing many different things, but instead he was using multiple descriptions of God from the Old Testament and applying them to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our brother through the new birth, the high priest and the only sacrifice of the covenant, and the beginning and the ending. He is the Son of Man, the Ancient of Days, and the firstborn from the dead, because he has the keys to hell and death. He is in the midst of the whole church, and he commands angels to do his will. His greatness should produce awe and wonder in us. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the second part of Revelations 1. 17. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. So when John fell to the ground as if dead, then Jesus lay his right hand upon him and told him, not to fear. Praise the Lord. We should not fear God in the sense that we are afraid of him. We should fear God in the sense that we have a reverential respect for him because of who he is. Praise the Lord. 
The songwriter said, because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I will lift my voice and say, I will worship you because of who you are. Praise the Lord. We know both his creative power and the power of his love, grace and mercy. We know of his holiness. Yet, though we are flawed, he extends to us the offer of a relationship and eternal life. He chose to bear death on the cross to give us the opportunity to know him intimately by the power of his spirit. God intends us no harm and therefore we have no reason to fear him as long as we are in a covenant relationship with him. Praise the Lord. Finally, let's look at Revelations 1, 18. It reads, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. John was using circumlocution again to show Jesus was the speaker. Though John did not specifically identify Jesus by name as the one speaking, his contextual clues can only point to Jesus. Praise the Lord. John's description of Jesus was also consistent with Paul's teaching to the church of Colossae in Colossians 1, 15 to 18, that Jesus is the firstborn from the dead. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ was the first to rise from the dead with a spiritual and immortal body. He was the first never to die again. He was the forerunner for us, the proof of our eventual resurrection to eternal life. Let's look into this a bit more deeply. From the beginning of creation, humans were meant to be eternal. When God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, he did not intend for them to experience the sting of death. Through Adam and Eve's disobedience, sin entered the world. Despite the sting of sin and death, Adam and Eve were to take comfort in God's promise that through Eve, her seed would eventually bruise the head of the lying serpent and bring an end to the tyranny of the grave. Praise the Lord. Eventually, God spoke through the prophet Isaiah to write of a time of resurrection, saying, Thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise. Awake and sing, ye that dwell in the dust, for thy dew is of the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Isaiah 26, 19. We know that Elijah saw the widow's son revived. And we know that Jesus brought Lazarus and others back to life. Those resurrections were only a taste of what is yet to come because those who were revived still experienced death again. When God was manifested in the flesh as Jesus Christ and humbled himself to become a man, he was tempted 
and tried, but he overcame every obstacle to living a holy life in a world full of sin. Jesus Christ knew no sin, yet he was cursed by the law because he was hung on a tree. And the scripture says, Deuteronomy 21, 23, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Jesus bore the weight of sin that he did not commit himself. So for him, the punishment of sin had no effect. The grave could not hold him. Death could not contain the holiness of the one true and living God. Praise the Lord. In Philippians 3, 21, Paul also wrote of the resurrection we will have in Christ. He said, Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself? There will be a resurrection. Like the glorified body of Jesus Christ that does not tarnish or fade, those of us who finish this race of faith, enduring unto the end, will also have glorified bodies in the resurrection of the dead. Praise the Lord. John's revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It explains to us exactly who Jesus is. Jesus is the centre and the focus of John's message to the church. It's important to remember that even though the book of Revelation was written in Greek, it is still a text written by an author who had a Hebrew background and a Hebrew way of thinking. Thus, interpreting revelations through the tool of circumlocution becomes necessary when we are trying to properly understand John's message. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. We should be in awe when we understand exactly who Jesus is. Praise the Lord. I hope that you've learned something from today's lesson. And looking forward to next week, Next week lesson, the topic is your first love. Topic in season and the scripture is taken from Revelations 2 verses 1 to 7 and the focus text is Revelations 2, 4 to 5. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me for Sunday School and have a blessed week.